What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Mind Something. If you're new here, my name is Jake and in today's video, we're going to take a look at a brand new GPU mineable coin called Rethereum. And we're also going to show you how to mine it, take a look at the tokenomics, the profitability, and even a little peek at the white paper. But before we get into the content, if you would do me a favor, hit that like button. And if you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so by the end of the video. Now, if you haven't heard of Rethereum yet, that would not be a surprise because it is new. It's only been around for about a month or so, and I want to take a moment to read to you what they have on their website here. It says, Rethereum is a new blockchain project that aims to revive the original vision of Ethereum as a global decentralized platform for money and new kinds of applications. Rethereum is based on a modified version of Ethereum Go client, which is a fork of the official 1.11.6 release. This was the final release to support proof of work. Rethereum is not just another Ethereum clone. It has several unique features that make it stand out from the crowd. Here are some of them. Rethereum uses a new proof of work consensus algorithm that replaces the hash functions with Blake 3. This allows for a natural progression of the chain from CPU mining to GPU mining, as well as improved security and performance. Rethereum has its own native currency, RTH, which is used to pay for transactions and smart contracts on the network. RTH has a fixed supply schedule that starts with four RTH per block and gradually decreases to one RTH per block after nine years. The total supply up to nine years will be 124,438,360 plus block fees and uncle rewards. Ethereum is fully compatible with Ethereum protocol, which means that it can run any Ethereum smart contract or decentralized application or DAP without any modifications. Ethereum also supports the BNB smart chain token standard, which allows for interoperability with other blockchain platforms. Rethereum is not afraid to experiment with new ideas and features that can improve the user experience and functionality of the network. For example, Rethereum has plans to move the reward model to a 2.1% inflation target in the future, which could provide more stability and sustainability for the network. Now, it is on Mining Pool Stats. It's been listed for about 45 days or so. As you can see, there are a lot of pools for it already, which is no surprise considering it's an ETH hash algo and probably pretty easy to implement. And you'll see that price action is moving up. We're currently sitting at about 26 cents. But network difficulty has really started to skyrocket over the last 24 to 48 hours. Now, I've only been experimenting with this coin for about the last three or four days. And since then, it has more than tripled in hash rate. And currently, block times are at eight and a half seconds. So there is currently only one exchange, which is Safe Trade. They are working on getting listed with Zedjack. And I saw on their Discord that they had a vote recently for raising funds for the Zedjack's listing. And it looks like everybody voted for all three options, which would be RTH donations to an address, a public mining address, and USDT donation. So we also have support from some of the larger miner devs, one of them being BZ Miner, which released yesterday, is currently supporting Ethereum at a 1% dev fee. We also have Rigel Miner adding it today and also at a 1% dev fee. And then SRB Miner also added this about three days ago, and it is currently at a 2% dev fee. Now, if we take a look at Safe Trade, you can see that price action is trending up at the moment. Looks like 24 hour volume is just over $7,800, which is not bad. So we have a little bit of liquidity there. And currently, I'm on mining for people testing out this algorithm, and I'm going to show you guys how to set up the flight sheet in Hive OS. Now, of course, before you can get started mining, you're going to need a wallet address. So if you go to Ethereum.org and scroll down to the bottom of the page, you're going to see that we already have support from MetaMask. And of course, this is because it is compatible with Ethereum. So if you have never created 
a MetaMask account before, it's very simple and a little bit easier than setting up a Core Wallet. Now, all you need to do is go to MetaMask.io and select the appropriate option. You can either do the Chrome browser extension, or you can do iOS or Android. Now, if you do the browser extension option, you're just simply going to select Install, and what it's going to look like after you download it is something like this. Now, of course, it's going to be a plugin up here at the top, so you'll need to click that perhaps and log in for the very first time. But once you've done that, you're going to select the three little dots on the right hand side, go down to settings, and then you're going to go to networks. And then you're going to select add a network, and then go to the bottom and select add a network manually. Now, you have all of this information provided on the website. You just simply need to copy and paste that in there. And once you're done, it should look something like this. Now, once you have finished, you just simply switch between the Ethereum mainnet and Ethereum. And now you have the option of copying your wallet address directly from the browser extension. Now, once you've got your wallet address, you're going to need to go to your wallets tab on HiveOS and create a new coin ticker. At the moment, Ethereum is not listed in HiveOS, so you will need to create your own. But depending on when you're watching this video, perhaps they've added it. Now, I've already added it, so all I need to do is type in RTH, then select my wallet then select my pool. In this case, I'm going to use mining for people. And we need to select which var diff to apply. And for your miner, depending on when you're watching this video, you may simply just need to select BZ miner or SRB miner or Rigel miner, or perhaps there are additional miners that have added support for Ethereum. But in this case, since we're doing this a little bit early, we need to type in custom show all and then we're going to select custom miner and then we're going to select setup miner config now notice if you don't see eth hash b3 you may need to clear the cache on your browser or perhaps open it in an incognito window now in order to find our installation url you need to go to the GitHub page of whichever miner you plan on using. So in this case, I've got BZ Miner version 16.0.0 pulled up. I would scroll down to the bottom and find the Linux version, right click it, and then copy link address. Go back to Hive, paste that installation URL there, and then just finish up with your worker and wallet template, adding your pull URL, and then any extra arguments. Now let me show you one that I set up for SRB miner as well, just so you can see a few of the extra arguments here. So we've got our pool URL, we've got the pool URL once again, we are disabling the CPU, making sure that we have the correct algorithm selected and our wallet address. Now as far as profitability is concerned, currently there isn't a website that shows profitability on Ethereum yet because it's so new. However, I took the time to create a little spreadsheet just to show you what profitability could look like depending on your hash rate, and I'll leave a link to this down in the description below. So currently the network hash rate is 1.23 terahash. If our farm size was 1 gigahash, this is what we'd be looking at. So we've got a block time of 8.6 seconds, which would be over 10,000 blocks per day. There are 4 coins per block and currently the price is 26 cents. This would be equivalent to $8.49 a day in revenue, but that is not profit. So in order to calculate profit, we need to know exactly how much power we're using. And in this case, I'm taking 1,000 mega hash divided by 60 mega hash, which would be a 3070, would give us 16.7 3070s. And 16.73070s times 120 watts each would be 2,004 watts total times 24 hours is 48 kilowatt hours. At 10 cents per kilowatt hour, we're looking at $4.80 a day in electricity. Now, currently, that would be a profit of 22 cents per 3070 
or a profit for the whole rig at $3.69 at one giga hack. Now, if we compare that to what is currently listed on hashrate.no, you can see that Chlor is at the top of the profitability at 14 cents per day, Nurai at 11 cents per day, and Kiro at 8 cents per day, followed by Dynex at 7 cents per day, and all of this is based at 10 cents per kilowatt hour. Now, of course, all of this is subject to change depending on when you are watching this video. And again, the price of the coin currently is sitting somewhere between 24 cents and 30 cents. But going back to the profitability calculator, what if this goes to a dollar? and you were mining it now, you'd be looking at roughly $32 a day in revenue or $1.67 per 3070 or $27.80 on a one giga hash farm consisting of 16 3070s. However, what if network difficulty goes up? Well, we can change this and let's say it gets up to two terahash and the price of the coin is at 25 cents. Well, now you're looking at $5 a day in revenue and only one cent per day in profit per 3070 or 22 cents total for 1637. So again, it's all subject to change. Hopefully this being a new coin, the price goes up. Perhaps we get some new exchange listings and all works out in our favor. As far as the white paper is concerned, it's not very long. But I'm not going to go through everything right now. Just a couple of key takeaways. Number one, they're talking about adding a 2.1% inflation rate to the overall emissions. And when it comes to block rewards, for the first four years, we're looking at four RTH per block. After that, we're switching to three RTH per block. And then at six years, we're switching to two. And at nine years, we're switching to one. Anyways, that's it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed the content. Do me a favor before you go, hit that like. And if you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. And leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think about Rethereum. Does it have a future or is it just another fork of a chain that's going to be dead in the water? Would love to hear your opinions. That being said, I will see you on the next one.